graduate student researcher. So I'm one of the graduate students that works with this uh, group. Um, it's called the Council of Youth Research at IDEA. And IDEA is um, the Institute of Democracy for and Education and Access. It's a research group at UCLA within our Graduate School of Education. Okay. So today you have like several schools that came out. Uh, right. Can you explain why they came out and what they would be doing? Right. So we have five schools um, that work within our Council of Youth Research. It's Crenshaw High, Locke High, Manual Arts, Roosevelt, and Wilson High. And um, so our program um, is a program that works with these high school students. And they do research over the summer and also during the school year. We pick a topic um, and each school focuses on um, sometimes a subtopic within the main topic and they go into their communities, into their schools and they do research. And um, it's actually quite amazing because what they're doing is they're doing university level research but they're high school students and they're high school students from communities um, uh, that are where often it is traditionally thought that these students are not very smart. And so you see them doing work at a very, very high level once they've been given the opportunity to do so. So it's pretty amazing. If you see the work that they've done, it's pretty amazing. Well, definitely having a, a legacy of your own going to UCLA, how, how has it been for you and your struggles uh, being an African American going there? Just, just give us a summary of what, basically, you know, what it is your major and, and, and just, you know, so, your experiences. So I'm in the uh, doctoral program for urban schooling and um, to be at an institution like that is amazing. I think that there are not enough of us um, at a university like this and um, that is unfortunate. But uh, the challenge is uh, for the folks who are there to do good work, of course, and to make an attempt to try to open the eyes of those who are there. So it's been a, a struggle and an interesting time. Okay, thank you. Anything you would like to add to any future students who might want to go to UCLA, things uh, they could be looking forward to on a positive note at least? You know what, I think that we all have the potential within us and I think that any student can do it and can be, um, but they do need the support. And as educators, um, our educators, our policy makers, our government, we need to understand that students in some communities are not getting the support that they need. And we need to do it. We need to step up. Because they have a lot of potential, incredible potential, just like any other communities. So thank you. Okay, so we begin our presentation. I would like to start out by sharing a video with you guys and following it up with a small discussion. Hope you guys enjoy it. school district, should she be serving time or was she justified? Our ancient canning is here to war on this mother's crime and her punishment here. This is going to really light up our message board. Yeah, it is a big, big debate right now, Robin. Kelly Williams Bowler is serving a 10-day sentence. She falsified residency records and prosecutors say a private investigator even caught her red-handed on video living in the wrong district. Bowler says all she wanted to do was help her daughters escape their crime-ridden Akron neighborhood. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Can we get a round of applause for everybody who made it out here on the street? Our community has been historically marginalized as a chaotic environment, and Watts is known for its infamous riots in the 1960s. Recently, our school was taken over by a charter management organization known as Green Dot, and it split the students into different clusters, such as Lock 3. And today, we will be presenting our research on leadership. Hello? All right. So the title of our presentation is, This ain't Trader Joe's, this is the real organic. Growing organic leaders from concrete. Trader Joe's is a store where organic leaders, I mean organic goods, <laughs> It's easily accessible to people that live in affluent communities. In communities of color, we lack 
resources such as healthy food, good textbooks, and etc. But we are progressing with this research to create the real organic in our communities. Right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> to understand what we are getting at, we are using this map to show how far out of our way we have to get these organic goods. It is 7.3 miles away from Watts and possibly further for some. This ties into our research because we believe that the real organic comes within the concrete that grows these roses. So our main focus throughout the summer was to, the, to find out the different types of leaders that there is, and we found many types, so we decided to come up with our own. And they were traditional leaders and organic leaders. Traditional leaders meaning those that have power and those that, those that are recognized by a title. While organic leaders are those that are developed from a community and live to serve the people. From here we see different types of characteristics that we found that each leader has. For instance, we discovered that in order to be a traditional leader, one must have a title, while organic leaders are chosen by a community. We also discovered that both can be very influential, but in different ways. However, they are not accountable to the same group of people. Traditional leaders are accountable to those who give them their paychecks, while organic leaders are accountable to those who are the people, which is us. Drawing from the summer research, we want to take a step further and look at how can we develop organic leaders. Also, what would it mean if an entire school would be developing organic leaders and why it's not happening? So since our research question is how do we develop organic leaders, we looked into Gramsci's theories. Antonio Gramsci is an Italian philosopher who was influenced by Marxism, yet he was developed by all the, all the union organizing that was going on in his university, which is the University of Turin. Some of Gramsci's key concepts that we are going to be talking about today are hegemony, traditional and organic intellectuals, and counter-hegemony. To understand how power is maintained, Gramsci developed the term hegemony. Hegemony is a person in power or with a title controlling a large group without them questioning. Hegemony is the way the dominant class upholds their belief among the people. Leadership can come from any individual, no matter what environment you come from, what color your skin is or the language you speak. Anybody could be a leader. The people up front, the people in the back, even the people standing. Yeah. All right. Leadership is a word defined in our society to be rarely seen. But now it is our turn to demand the correct definition and to be taught like the intellectual, intellectual leaders that we all are. My name is Cesar Ramirez. I'm Elmer Garcia. I'm Gustavo Correa. I'm Jenny Sanchez. I'm Miguel Sosa. I'm Karina Arias. I'm Karina Arenas. I'm Yesenia Reyes. I'm Joshua DeLeon. I'm Keisha Solis. I'm Dimitri Megan. And I am Frank Greek, Jr. And this is important because we are all leaders!